Good morning, grade six. Welcome back to our home based learning lesson number five on ancient Rome, the growth of the Republic, and now beginning the transition from the Republic to the emperors. So, for the first thing, please take time to write down your answers to these bell ringer questions in your notes. You'll have to submit these at the end of class to manage back quickly and quietly. Pause the video and please answer these questions. Now, uh, the first question, what was about to happen in Rome when we finished the last lesson? I was thinking about that a little bit. I didn't quite tell you, but I did hint at something, and it has to do with the second thing on this, the second question, which is what do hungry people do? Now, there's a lot of people who are hungry, right, who just moved back with the army. They came back and um, came to these farms that were run down. Remember that house that was looked pretty shaggy, right? Farms that weren't ready to be worked. And no food, no money, no um, way of living. So they mass migrate to cities where it's not much better, but they can they can beg, they can do other things. All the cities or all the farmland now belongs to the rich. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. The Senate's growing in power, taking away power from the other people, doing whatever they want. And people are hungry. Hungry people rebel, right? So. We're looking for a revolution in history. That's what's about to come. So civil war starts. Okay. Hungry people everywhere. This is a continuation of last class. What do they do? They attempt to take land. There's these two guys, Tiberius and Geisha. You read about them in your reading, so I won't cover them too much. But they are two guys, brothers, who uh, work to free up land to give back to the people, saying the power of... And what makes our country strong is people having their own land, those kinds of things. However, it didn't really work. And so Senate still had control. The Senate's made up the rich, of the rich. Nobody really wants to give away their money or their land. Problems arise. Okay, life goes on with the Senate in control. Then this guy named Julius shows up on the scene. And he's telling people, he's a general in the army, he tells, I will give you land. Poor people, I will give you land if you serve in the army for me. So all these people are like, I got nothing else to do. I'll serve in the army if you give me land. And so what begins to happen is this guy, Julius Caesar, joins with his friends, Pompey and Cros, okay, and they become a consul. It's actually called a tri triumvirate, okay? Three people, tri means three, and they're in charge. There's three people in charge. Julius isn't quite Caesar yet. He calls himself Julius Caesar later. Um, but he's offering these people land to fight. And so what do they do? They're Romans, so they go and fight, and they begin taking lands in the north. And Julius Caesar becomes more and more popular. He's conquering the Gauls, which is in the northern parts of Europe, England. He's expanding the Roman Empire. As he's expanding... Right? What do you gain? You gain land. So he's offering land that has been won through battle back to um, his army and his soldiers. And really, it, at the time, it would be a very good thing for you to do if you're poor. Serve in the army and be taken care of there, but also have land when you're finished. Three-person government. While he's gone, the other two guys, Croas, Crassus, and Pompey, they're, they're back in Rome. Crassus actually dies in battle. But um, while Julius is gone fighting these battles on behalf of Rome, okay, he's called back. Basically, Pompey has worked up everybody in Rome saying that he's a traitor. He's trying to rule this country all by himself. The Senate's all on his side. And he's trying to become really the only leader and get Julius out with the army. So what was tradition is that Pomp uh, when they... When a general re would return to Rome, they would leave the army. They tell him, "Go home, go your separate ways," and just the general would come back for a triumphal entry into Rome, parades, things like that. But instead of sending his army away and um, obeying Pompey's order, he comes back with his army. And so this is kind of scary, right? The Roman army's coming to attack Rome. What do you do? You can't call on your friends because you just killed everybody. And so. Julius Caesar's like, you're calling me back without my army just to be um, probably killed for 
your the sake of someone else to be the ruler. And he says, no way, I'm taking my army with me. So he keeps his army and he marched back to Rome on, on the day of January 10, 49, the year of 49 BC. He crosses the Rubicon River. And so there will be times in history or times in literature, places that you'll read and people will reference. This is the moment where he crossed the Rubicon or the Rubicon moment. And really what it means is um, he crossed the river and there's no turning back. He had to take the army. Like he could have left the army on the other way, but he entered Rome with the soldiers. There's no going back. He is committed to declaring war on his own Senate, on his own friends. And so, oh, Pompey, not, Prof, I got a spelling mistake in there, or wrong word. Um, so Pompey and the Senate flee. They flee to Greece, where they uh, were later defeated, and it begins a civil war. The poor on the army with Julius Caesar against the established rich, the um, people who are caught up in the bureaucracies, flee and are defeated. And then Julius Caesar takes over as dictator, and we remember that role as dictator. It was someone who was in charge of the government for six months. You'll see there that he was dictator for five years. That means he uh, he liked the power so much that he didn't give it back. And so in the opposite of what it was supposed to be, it now took the power away from the people, and it was all resting in Julius. So he, um, a lot of the power that the Senate had before was actually being taken away to Julius Caesar. However, he did increase the Senate to 900 people to make more people satisfy. He lowered taxes. He created our calendar that we have now, and you, um, you might appreciate that. I do. I like knowing what day it is. And so he's, he's ruling along five years, and then there's this guy named Brutus, and I have up there, he's the brutal friend. Brutus, the brutal friend, the Senate, the others who are all scared, are worried that uh, Julius is becoming too powerful. So out of fear of his power, the Senate, on the day of March 15th, 44 BC, he, they, the Senate assassinates Julius Caesar. And so um, one of them was Brutus, who was considered his best friend. So the lesson here is don't name your son Brutus, because Brutus just doesn't have a good reputation in history as being a terrible friend to those around him. Um, and so ends the rule of Julius Caesar. However, like most leaders and people in power, they had a plan for when they died. And he, he planned, he, it pays to plan. And so when Julius Caesar had died, he had a plan to leave power with someone named Octavian. And that is the next person. And probably the most exciting one to learn about thus far. So I would like for you to please um, finish those questions from the beginning, take notes, submit your questions and your notes to manage back in a document under uh, Home Based Learning Week 3, and I will see you all for session 